What's up guys, it's Austin with Pickleball Playbook and I have a super fun and instructional video for you today to help you to improve your pickleball game. What we're gonna be talking about is how to counter, which what a counter is is when our opponents speed up the ball fast when we're up on the kitchen line and we hit that ball back down at their feet, as well as how to reset. And a reset is where we hit the ball soft so that it lands back at their feet and it kind of starts the point over. I'm also gonna be breaking down how you can know when to counter versus reset, specifically when you're in hands battle when the balls are flying 100 miles per hour. So be sure to stick around to the end because after I teach you how to hit each shot, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can decipher between hitting a reset or a counter. This video is sponsored by Titan. This is the ball machine that I use, but more on them later. So I'm gonna be breaking down for you guys how you can hit the more dominant counter, which is gonna be that top spin roll counter as you come over the ball. First of all, you need the correct grip. So you can choose between two grips. I actually hold an Eastern full time, and I'll show you guys what that is, but majority of people will be holding Continental. So you need to do whatever one's more comfortable for you, but typically when you're hitting a counter, you wanna counter on, on your backhand side. And if you're more comfortable hitting counters on your backhand side, I'd strongly suggest that you use a Continental grip. If you're more comfortable countering on your forehand side, I would strongly suggest using more of an Eastern grip your backhand's gonna suffer a little bit, but not if you have a two-hander like me. So, in a nutshell, if you have a one-hander, I'd strongly suggest using Continental. If you have a two-hander, you're fine to use Eastern, just like me. Eastern, starting with that, hold your paddle like this. Flat part of the face is gonna be facing towards you, and you're gonna put your index knuckle inside right here on this first bevel, okay? That wraps around, and then the bottom of your palm this bottom corner also needs to line up on that same exact first bevel as if you were to draw a line right here. So as you can see, both sides are lining up there. That's gonna be your typical Eastern grip. Now it's a little bit more difficult to counter on the backhand side, but super easy to counter on the forehand side in that grip. If you have a two-hander, you can easily manipulate your paddle to come over the ball, which is what I like to do. Typically on my counters is with two hands. Anyway, and whenever I'm attacking, I'll attack with one hand. Continental, on the other hand, you're gonna come down the outside edge of your paddle here to this bevel and move one bevel over. There's a little half bevel. So this is bevel number one, you move to bevel number two. So that's, you're gonna line up with the same exact two positions, bottom of your palm, as well as the top of your knuckle here. And then that's gonna allow you to be able to counter very, very easily with one hand because your paddle is instantly going to be turned down. Notice how I have this trigger finger here. That's just because I'm lining the bottom of my palm up as well with that. If I didn't line the bottom of my palm up and it was hanging off, then I would be here and I wouldn't have a trigger finger. And I also wouldn't have any control or a forehand, a forehand as I hit through the ball. So you need to make sure that these two things are lining up in order for you to come over the ball. So pick, if you have a two-hander, which isn't a lot of people, use Eastern. If you have a one-hander, I'd suggest using Continental, that'll help you to be able to put your paddle down and get more reach all the way around your body. Okay, the next thing is the motion, and it's a super simple motion, but what it comes down to is timing. Okay, we have to time that counter. We wanna be hitting the counter out in front of us, meaning we don't wanna let the ball get behind us if they hit it to the side of us. On either side, that's gonna make the counter almost impossible. That would be a time to reset. So in order to keep it out in front of us, we always wanna make sure that we're in a good ready position. Okay, we want our knees a little bit more than shoulder width apart or around shoulder width apart, knees bent. This is gonna help us to be quicker by having that knee bend and bouncing. It'll help keep us in rhythm as well. So we're here and then our paddle is out in front and we're in our ready position. Now I've broken this down before but you'll see all the pros have different ready positions. You got Riley Newman, he's like this with his ready position because he holds a frying pan grip. You have someone like Ben Johns, his ready position's more down here outside edge of the paddle is pointing upwards. Annalie Waters, she's more out here. She's got two hands on the paddle at all times. And then you have J.W. Johnson, he's chilling down here. Okay, it's very interesting. They all have different ready positions and everybody says that J.W.'s got the fastest hands of every single person, yet his ready position is down here. The reason for that is because whenever he counters, he hits a topspin counter. So it's very easy for him to just simply come up from where he's at. He's a lot quicker coming up. Whereas if he was up here and then you try to topspin counter a lower ball, you can't. You'll have to cut under that ball and reset it. 
So it actually makes sense that he has his ready position down here for him. I'm not suggesting that you do it, but I am suggesting that you figure out what ready position works best for you. I like to have my paddle kind of down here tipped slightly upwards. That way, if they hit it below my waist, I can easily counter with underspin or reset with underspin. And if they hit it above my waist, I can easily reset. I can easily counter with topspin. So that's what works best for me. But you'll see you got people like Callie Smith. She's up here and she has a two-hander and she winds it up to create that topspin too. It's just taking more time. So actually JW has more time than everybody else by having his ready position down there, which is actually really interesting. So the next step is making sure that we have a good ready position. Our paddle is out in front of us. We don't want our paddle like this. We're exerting a ton of energy if our elbows are totally straight out in front of us. Yes, we'll be able to reach the ball quicker, but we wanna make sure that we have a relaxed ready position. We don't want it in here either. This is gonna be an awkward position. We're gonna have to push out to get to the ball. We want some type of in-between there to counter the ball. And majority of counters for those that are using continental grip are going to be on that backhand side. So if you're using continental grip, you wanna make sure that you're holding slightly towards your backhand like this. I strongly suggest doing this. You won't see a lot of the pros hang towards the backhand. And that's just simply because they've had so much practice. But if you're at any level before four or five area, five zero area, hang towards that backhand because it's a lot quicker to go from backhand to forehand than it is to go from if you were holding forehand to then backhand. This is gonna be your weaker side. That's gonna end up hurting your shoulder. So hang kind of towards that backhand side. If you have a two-hander, it really doesn't matter because you're gonna be quicker since you have that other hand to wrap around the ball. So it's gonna help you with your overall speed. So remember our ready position isn't out here. It's also not in here. It's some type of in-between. We just wanna make sure that it's out in front of us because that's gonna help us to be able to react to the ball better. Notice how this entire time that I've been demonstrating this, maybe you can't see from that position, my feet are shoulder width apart, as I said before, and my knees are slightly bent. If you're straight up and down, your reaction time is actually a whole lot less. It's a whole lot uh, shorter of a reaction time than if your legs are spread out and your knees are bent. Just doing that little knee bend sends signals to your brain. I don't know the exact science behind it, but you are a whole lot faster. So that's why you see all of these pros slightly bent. Okay, so now that we've broken all that down, all that stuff is absolutely essential. And now it's the most important part, which is actually countering the ball. For the backhand side, all it comes down to is the angle of our paddle and our motion. So our angle of our paddle needs to be slightly downward, as you can see that. So slightly downward, if you have a two-hander, it should look something like this. A one-hander, you'd be in this grip. So it's pretty easy to put down. And then we're simply brushing outward and upward. A lot of people think that it's just upward. If you only go upward, and I actually did this in one of my recent Instagram posts where I accidentally just went upward, just pops the ball up. That's all it's gonna do. You have to go outward and upward, kind of creating a ramp as you come up the ball. So I'm outward and upward, outward and upward, outward and upward, all in one. I'm kind of creating a di diagonal line with a slight skew bend in it as I come up the ball. So doing that's gonna allow that counter to not only go downwards, but go downwards with the correct spin. Because as the ball is hitting with top spin, it's going to naturally go downwards, make it a lot more difficult on your opponents. So the Titan is by far my favorite ball machine that I've ever tried. And I have tried, I wanna say majority of them. I'm sure that I haven't tried majority of them. I'm sure there's like, I don't know, maybe there's hundreds out there, but I've tried at least eight of them. Um, I've tried Ernie, Slinger, uh, Spin Shot, Simon X, Lobster. I've tried a lot of them. This one's by far the best. It's awesome. You have programmable drills inside of it. It allows you to be able to put a specific point together and then you can do that point. So for instance, I just created a drill called Singles Scramble and it essentially just takes me through a, what a singles point would be like. Running me side to side, there's a little bit of cat and mouse, there's a hands battle at the end. You can make the serve extremely difficult. This thing goes up to 65 miles per hour. It can go up to 75 miles per hour. The best part about it is that it's portable. It holds all the balls inside of it. You can easily get it to and from the courts with these wheels. It's just a nice machine. So I couldn't suggest it more. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can get $100 off if you wanna pick one of these up. That's it for the sponsor of this video. Now back to the instruction. So the most important thing with a one-hander and you're holding Continental, you wanna make sure that you're slightly towards that backhand side because you're gonna be countering backhands 
everywhere over here with one hand, all the way to literally here, you can still counter with a backhand. So, whereas with a forehand, it might get a little bit awkward right around the shoulder area and especially down here because you can't go through your body. So hold slightly towards that backhand side and plan to counter, I would say literally 90 to 95% on your backhand side. If they start hitting that shoulder a lot, all that you're gonna do is shift your feet towards the side so that you can easily counter where that is. And then it's gonna end up at your chest anyway, rather than being in that awkward chicken wing position. So if you hold continental plan on hitting a lot of backhands, if you hold that Eastern grip that we went over, you're gonna be hitting either a two-hander, and I sometimes will still counter because I have a lot of flexibility in my wrist, and I invert my wrist a ton. I'll still counter with just one hand. Nothing beats the two-handed counter with an Eastern grip though. And the most important thing with the two-handed counter is it's that same exact motion, but I'm creating a loop prior. So I can get more power on the shot with the two-hander as I create that loop, and then I'm coming outward and upward and across as I hit. So it's this motion, outward, upward, and then across, and I'm landing on that dominant shoulder as I come through the shot, and then I'm back out in front of me. You're gonna be able to get to ready position a lot quicker than with a one-hander, because your second hand is gonna give you that added stability on the paddle. Most essential thing is that my loop doesn't go beyond my shoulder. I don't ever wanna reach behind me, that's gonna be way too big of a motion, and that ball is for sure going to go and hit the back fence because you're giving, you're giving it way too much of a loop and way too big of a backswing. And so that's gonna be way more power than you actually need. So you need to make sure that you keep it all out in front of you, really nice and condensed. And then just a little golden nugget for you guys. This is probably the best source of advice if you have a two-hander, is although you want your left, sorry, your non-dominant, because there are lefties out there, right, speaking to you guys, you want your non-dominant arm to do the motion, but you want your dominant hand to grip harder than your non-dominant hand. Just try it, that's all I can say. Just try it and you'll see that your backhand is so much better by just making sure that you're gripping with your dominant, arm, dominant hand harder than your non-dominant and then allowing your non-dominant to do the actual motion. That's gonna help you hit through the ball so much better and then come off the ball. Like I said, just try it you'll see that it helps out a ton. Forehand counter, we're doing the same exact thing. We're coming outward and upward. We're gonna be hitting a lot of these to the side of our body and then shifting as we hit through with that Eastern grip. So we're shifting to the side and then we're pretty much coming outward, upward and across as well. Okay, so it's not just an outward and upward motion. That would be very awkward. We're coming across the side of the ball, almost creating side spin and outward and upward so that we're creating top spin. Outward and upward and across. The top of the ball. As we come over it, we're finishing on that non-dominant shoulder. Doesn't need to be a huge motion. And again, the most important thing with the counter, we don't want to reach. We don't want to reach back here. Should never see our paddle behind ourselves. So we're out in front of us, outward and upward. Everything stays out in this very small motion. So now that brings us to the reset. And with the reset, what we want to make sure that we're doing is absorbing. So with a counter, we're taking all that power and we're putting it back on them. Whereas with the reset, we're absorbing all that power and then we're putting it back soft. Okay, so that it lands in the kitchen and it starts over the point. You won't see a reset until you get into the higher levels. Like you might see it in 4.0 uh, a couple of times, but people aren't gonna be consistent resetters in 4.0. They're probably gonna be more so bangers. Um, and then you get to the 4.5 level, you'll see a lot more resets. 5.0, you'll see resets all the time. And pro, you'll see resets all the time. Just watch Colin Johns, he's a reset machine. But we want to remember when we're hitting a reset that we're absorbing. So if you're holding that continental grip, we're cutting under the ball, and this is how short the motion is. We want to keep it extremely, extremely short. Maybe two, three, four inches of motion, and I'm letting it come into me. And just notice, I'm just separating my arms like this. That's all a reset is. So we need to make sure that we find the ball, and then we separate our arms. And I'm literally just going to the side. They've already hit it at me. If this was a wall, it's gonna bounce directly back. So if they were hitting against a wall, it's just gonna bounce directly back to them. I don't need to give them any motion outward because it's already gonna do that. All that I need to do is absorb it and cut off any of that power so that it lands back in the kitchen. So I'm just simply going outward just like this. And that's all that a reset's gonna be on the backhand side. 
You're gonna be resetting, like I said, 90% 90, 90 of the time on your backhand side. If it is on the forehand, it's gonna be out here, and it's the same exact thing. Except for I don't have this separating from it, but I'm just coming on the side of the ball. So I'm creating a side under the ball. There's not any outward motion. There might be a little bit, but you just don't need it. You just simply cut under the ball. And like I said, the more reps that you get, the better that you'll get at this and the better feel that you'll get for it. So just have your ball machine or have someone hit the ball at you super, super hard over and over again, and just practice trying to keep that motion slow, condensed, small. And if you can do that, you'll be able to hit a great reset. Now, if we're holding Eastern, this is gonna be more helpful for you because it's gonna open your paddle face a bit more. So you're holding that Eastern grip. If you were holding Continental, it'd be more like this. And if we're holding Eastern, it'd be more like this. So since you're holding Eastern, it's open more, which makes it easier for you to shave underneath the ball. Same exact motion on both sides. And you'll see it's just gonna come down to reps again, getting that feel for it. So now that you know how to do it, this brings us to the most valuable piece of information is how you can decide whether to counter or to reset. And like I said, there's one really simple thing that literally anybody can do, no matter how uncoordinated or coordinated you are. And what that is, is you wanna act like there's a bubble around you, okay? If the ball gets inside the bubble, then you're going to reset the ball. If the ball stays outside the bubble, you're gonna counter that ball. And I gotta give credit where credit's due. I learned this from Tyson McGuffin. And what we wanna do is act like that bubble is just inside our ready position. So remember with our ready position, we're not in here, we're out here in a relaxed way. So any, anywhere outside this is gonna be a counter. Anywhere inside this is gonna be a reset. So we're in this relaxed position. Picture that bubble with me. I don't know if I'll edit a bubble in here, if I have that editing capacity, <laughs> but you wanna picture that that bubble is right there. Countering anything outside of it, resetting anything inside of it. And if you focus on this, when you're in your drilling sessions, when you're playing in rec games and when you're playing in tournaments, you'll see that you'll make the right decision, not 100% of the time, but a lot more often than if you don't focus on that bubble. So just picture that there's actually a bubble and as you bend in, that bubble bends in until it bursts. When that bubble bursts, that's when we gotta be calm, cool, collected, reset. But if that bubble never bursts and we keep it out in front of us, counter the shiz out of that ball, put it right back at their feet. Well, that's everything for this video. I hope that it was instructive and super helpful for you guys and brought you guys a ton of value. I know that as you apply the things and get your reps in, you guys will become absolute resetting and countering beasts. So I'm excited for you. Again, the sponsor of this video was Titan. I don't partner with any companies that I don't 100% believe in, and I would never suggest that you guys get something that's not absolutely legit. This machine's legit. So remember, it's $100 off through my link at the top of the description of this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. If you want to have fun and improve your game at the same time, download the Pickleball Drills app. Regularly uploaded drills to help you feel game-like pressure, all while rapidly improving your consistency. For access, click the top link in the description of this video.